Hello learn learners, I welcome you all to this session on market segmentation. Again it is a part of the course AMK01 for BCOM program and for, for BCOM CBCS. It is part of BCOE142, this is course code and the name of the program course is marketing for AMK01 and for the BCOM CBCS the name of the course is principles of marketing. So before we uh, discuss you know the today's session, let us quickly uh, recall what we have learnt in the previous session. So in the previous session we have discussed the evolution of marketing, how from barter system we have evolved to the uh, modern marketing, right? And then we try to see that this is because of all these changes and this is because of all these you know shift in the paradigm, marketing has got a new uh, sense marketing has got a new definition a new meaning and then we say now in modern sense in say we say that marketing is a process of you know identifying the target market and then trying to identify the needs of the customer of that particular target market converting that need into offering which is of course products which may be tangible and intangible and then distribution of those offerings to the customers taking their feedback and in building or incorporating all those feedback into the marketing mix decision. So this is what we have uh, learnt in the previous session. Now we will move on to today's discussion. For today's discussion uh, let us see what all we are going to discuss. First we will try to see what this STP is that is segmenting, targeting and positioning what is this all about and then we will learn what is segmentation, what are the requirements of effective segmentation, basis of segmentation, importance of segmentations, level of segmentation and segmentation strategy. STP if you uh, see it is a very you know common and widely used term in marketing. Okay? The ST, this is a tool basically to align your offerings or products with the right customers. The customers are there in the market. If you want to align your products you know, to the, with the right customers, then you have to uh, use this tool, you have to uh, use this strategy. So STP stands for segmentation, targeting and positioning. Right? Today's discussion will focus on segmentation. In the coming sessions, we will discuss about targeting and positioning. So segmentation. It is always said that segmentation is the first activity of marketing process. Why first activity? Because when we said marketing, we said marketing is a process of identifying you know the target market and when we identify we also try to analyze and understand it. Why do we need to analyze and understand the market? Because market by nature is very heterogeneous in nature. The taste and preferences of the consumers, the demographies you know. It all varies, it is very dynamic also, it, first of all it varies from one person to the another and then it keeps on changing also with time, with the same person maybe the taste may change, right. So market is very very heterogeneous and if you do not try to bring some kind of homogeneity in that particular market, it may become a bit difficult for you to cater to the needs of the customers in a proper way. So we try to segment the market. So what is segmenting? Segmentation is dividing a large heterogeneous market into smaller subsets and trying to keep homogeneous audience into one segment. We are trying to convert the heterogeneity to homogeneity up to certain extent. Customers in these segments they share common interest, needs, wants, demand, similar taste, purchasing power and preference. Right? In each segment all these aspects, all these things if you see. Say for example, I have divided the whole market in four segments, segment A, segment B, segment C and segment D. So all the customers of segment A will share by and large common interest, needs, wants or demands. They, they will have similar taste and kind of similar purchasing power and preferences. So market segments are very important thing to understand is market segments are already there in the market. You do not have to create it, you just have to identify it and choose it. So on the various basis, on the various uh, you know ways you can segment the market. So uh, as we move with the discussion today, we will see how all can we segment the market or divide the market. But before you know dividing the market, we need to have a proper understanding of certain prerequisites which should be you know checked or uh, seen before we go for segmenting the market. So those requirements are 
the market or segment should be identifiable and measurable it should be differentiable it should be accessible it should be substantial stable and actionable so what are all these what do we mean when we say that segment should be identifiable or measurable it means the segment that you have chosen for that segment the size of the segment the purchasing power of the customers belonging to that particular segment the profits and profile of market segment they can be measured you should be able to measure all these things unless you are able to measure it you can't anticipate you can't forecast your sales right and not only that you should also be able to measure the growth of that particular segment because as a business as a business organization you want to sustain in the market and also grow grow in the market so you should be very careful while segmenting the market and you should be checking it whether the market segment is identifiable or not then comes the market segment should be differentiable what does it mean segment should have similar need or want right or maybe demand see uh, if you talk in economics term there is a difference between need want and demand although in marketing we generally use need wants and demand as one and the same but quickly i'll tell you just like need everyone knows something you wish to have but not every need is want the companies you know the economic activities which, which is surrounding around the customers or all the economic activities i would say surrounds around the need only had there been no need amongst human there would have wouldn't have been any economic activity okay? so there are needs right but when the need has a kind of intensity with it and people have ability to pay to satisfy that particular need and also have willingness to pay for that then that need become become wants right and when the people have particular you know in, uh, intense need and they have ability to pay they have willingness to pay for that particular need at a particular price and at a particular time then this want become demand so the segment should have similar demand that ways similar needs right which are clearly different from the needs of people in other segments say for example you are trying to divide the uh, market into two segments segment a and segment b right and there is no different uh, difference you know in those segments there is no difference in the demand pattern of the customers in those those two segments then what is the need there is no need right so unless the segments are clearly differentiable right they uh, we should not go for market segmentation for example if married and unmarried men behave similarly while purchasing shoes right this is what happens so there is little value in placing them in different segments so why to segment the market suppose you are a manufacturer of shoes or you are a you know a business organization who a business organization who is dealing with uh, selling shoes to the customers right and your customers is you know you have segmented the market on the basis of gender that you are uh, making it you are manufacturing it or you are selling it to men only right then again further you don't have to segment the market that these are unmarried men and these are mar married men why because this has no value and then accessible your segment should be accessible also unless you are able to reach to a particular segment unless you are able to distribute your goods and services to that particular segment there is no you know meaning to choose a segment or uh, you know even segment the market then the next requirement is it should be substantial that means segment should be large enough to be potentially profitable if you are trying to uh, you know divide the segment on certain basis and then you have chosen a particular segment but if the size of the segment is not large enough that means you don't have enough sales and if you don't have enough sales that means you don't have you know enough profit so if potential profitability is not there in the segment there is no point of segmentation so the uh, important uh, prerequisite of effective segmentation is the substantiality of that particular segment again the segment should be stable because if you are in the business you don't want to do business for a day or two you want to remain there for for a longer period of time so segments should be such that they can be marketed over a long period of time and it should have it should have high growth rate unless your segment have 
high growth rate, you cannot have your high growth rate. And then your segment should be actionable. That means if it should, you know, it should be according to your capacity. When I say your, that means your business organization. So there can be a very promising segment in the market, but unless you have the capacity to cater to that particular segment, cater to the needs of that particular segment, you cannot act on it. So that segment is not for you. So segment has to be actionable. Uh, so we have seen that these are the requirements of effective segmentation identifiable it should be measurable differentiable accessible substantial stable and actionable now we'll see what are the various you know basis of segmentation as i said customers in the market they are you know very different to each other the market is quite heterogeneous right and you have to convert that heterogeneity into homogeneity so there are you know various bases on which you can divide your market or convert your convert the heterogeneity of market into homogeneity right there are various bases but broadly they can be categorized under four categories geographic segmentation demographic segmentation psychographic segmentation and behavioral segmentation so these three are the four broad categories in which or through uh, through which you can divide your market you can segment your market let us now see one by one what are these you know uh, styles of segmentation or basis of segmentation geographic segmentation when market is divided on the basis of geographic units such as countries states cities etc that becomes your geographic segmentation or maybe it can be on the basis of uh, other geographical factors such as climate or maybe cultural preferences populations and more or maybe it may be rural urban and suburban markets so these are the various kinds or these are the various bases on which you can segment your market and this is called geographic segmentation when targeting different geographic segments marketers need to take into consideration elements such as language or culture as they change depending on the region they are targeting the moment you move from one region to the other right the culture of you know there there you can see the cultural differences you can see the change in the languages you can see the change in the changes in the lifestyles also for example if you see black color bridal dresses would not be designed in india market by indian market by and large by and large in india all across you know the four zones north east west and south black color perhaps is not considered good right so if you are a manufacturer if you are a business organization who is dealing with the bridal dresses you'll avoid to have black color and this this notion you have got from the cultural thing right that this is the uh, the culture of a particular region culture of a particular country our country that we don't prefer black color in terms of bridal dresses geographic segmentation is you know very popular and it is ideal for large and mncs large mncs i would say large companies and mncs as it helps them understand location based attributes of a specific target market which enables them to better address the varying wants and needs of the customer in these different regions suppose your organization is very large so obviously you would like to cater to the entire market right you would like to maybe cross the boundary of the nation you may be a multinational corporation fine in that case whatever you know product mix decision you have made howsoever you have designed the strategy may not fit to the entire market so you have to uh, tailor made it according to the cultural preferences of that particular region right so and if you can do so you can churn the benefit so geographic segmentation is uh, said to be ideal for you know large organizations or especially for multinational corporations for example if you see uh, macd mcdonalds they sell burgers and uh, you know target local markets and with customized menus if you see the menu of you know mcdonald you come to india you will have a different set of menu right you will go to some other part of the globe you will have maybe some additions or some deletions in the menu or some uh, different uh, you know kind of uh, ingredients which is being used in the menu so geographic segmentation is also ideal for small businesses i would say not only for big businesses but also for small businesses with limited budget why because if you as a business organization if your scale of operation is small that means you don't have that financial capability you know to serve the entire market right so in that particular case 
what do you do? You try to segment the market on the basis of geographic segmentation. Maybe you want to cater to a particular region. In a particular country, you want to cater to a particular state or to a particular region, to a particular city, right? So, other than you know large scale organization, it is also ideal for small businesses. Compared to other uh, segmentation types, geographic segmentation is relatively easy to perform. It is, it can be easily uh, segment, segmented because there is no complication in that. There is nothing that you cannot understand in this. Then comes geographic, uh, demographic segmentation. Demographic segmentation is segmenting the market on the basis of age, education, gender, income, occupation, religion, race, nationality and household size. So when you are trying to divide your market on the basis of these things, age, education, gender, household size, income, occupation, that means you are doing demographic segmentation. This form of market, market segmentation is the most common because demographic information is easy to obtain through census data, analytics software, consumer insights and more. And especially, you know, in today's world, when information technology is playing an important role, we have big data analytics and we have all kinds of information that we can use for segmentation. That is why this form of market segmentation is you know, gaining much importance nowadays. This enables the marketer to reach customers on a more human level with personalized marketing. And when you are trying to you know, be more human and when we are trying to uh, do personalized marketing, what is happening? you are trying to create deeper customer loyalty. For instance, suppose I am a customer and I have certain needs. There are certain needs which I have explained, which are stated, but there are certain needs which I may not explain, I may not state, but need is still there. For instance, suppose I am a person who belongs to a middle class uh, income group, right? And I want to buy a sari. So my explained need is that I want to buy a sari, but my unstated, unexplained need is I want a good sari, but the prices should be reasonable. It shouldn't be very high so that, I, so that I cannot afford it. It should be reasonable enough so that I can afford it and also I like it, right? So if suppose somebody is trying to cater to me or maybe a particular brand, if they keep that particular range also for a customer like me, then I will become more loyal to them, isn't it? Why? Because I, ha I have been delighted. Again, if you recall the previous session, what I expected, fine, which I am explaining or I may not be explaining. So what I expected and what I have been delivered, there is a difference and the difference is favorable. That means expectation is lesser and the delivery is much more. That means it will result into my delight, the customer delight. And the, when the customer is delighted, the customer is loyal also. Please remember, it is always important to have loyal customers in your business. They are very, very important. You have to have, you have to retain the loyal customers in your business. Why? Because retention cost, if you see, it is much lower than acquisition cost. The cost you have to incur to acquire new customer in the market is much, much higher than the cost you incur to retain that particular customer in the market. Number one, the cost is lower, retention cost is lower. And number two is these loyal customers, they, you know, they work as brand ambassadors for you. They work as the advocates for your brand without charging any fee and they bring in more and more customers, right? So if you can have customer loyalty, that means you are going to have a profitable proposition in business. So demographic segmentation, you know, gives you that edge to create loyal customer because again you are trying to segment the market on the basis of age, education, gender, income, occupation, religion, race, nationality and household size, right? For instance, again if you see, suppose we are talking of toys, right? So toys which are preferred by the age group of 0 to maybe 3 years may not be similar to that of 3 to 10 years, right? So Kids of 0 to 3 years maybe, they would have, uh, be, they would be needing different kind of uh, toys, right? These are, uh, on the other hand, the kids who are in the age group of, say for example, 3 to 10, they would have a different, you know, choice for set of toys. So, 
if I'm a toy manufacturer, if I'm a business who is dealing, uh, dealing with toys, what do I need to do? I need to, the seg I need to segment the markets on the basis of age group. So for maybe zero to three years, I'll have this set of you know, offerings to the customers. For three to 10 years, I'll have this set of offerings to the customers and so on and so forth. Uh, again, you know, choice or uh, strat uh, sorry, uh, preferences or choices of the teenagers would obviously be different than the kids and the adults will be different from the teenagers. So there are various bases through which we can, you know, uh, seg segment the market and when we are doing it on the basis of age or education or gender or income or occupation, religion, race, nationality and household size, then it is known as demographic segmentation. Let me be very clear, what base would you choose for your segmentation depends upon the kind of business you are doing. I am only explaining the various bases of this segmentation, right? But what would be the best or maybe you, if you are segmenting the market, you, you may have to use one or more bases for segmentation. Well, we are coming to that particular, you know, topic also. So, but before that, let us see what is psychographic segmentation. Psychographic segmentation is market segmentation when we are trying to divide the market on the basis of personality, lifestyle, social class, values, beliefs and attitudes. Then it is called as psychographic segmentation. For example, if you see, you cannot, uh, you know, expect I, I, antiques, I, antique items to be bought by everyone. There is a different class who prefers to buy antique class, uh, antique items, right? The, uh, similarly, you know, expensive paintings, luxury cars, or maybe best example, luxury mobile manufacturing brands, you know, they have different set of product for different set of segments. So these are not the, the luxury items if I say these are not available for people from every class. So you have two choices either you concentrate on a particular segment or maybe you go with different offerings for different segments. Then comes behavioral segment. Behavioral segmentation divides customers according to behavior pattern as they interact with the company. A company can segment their market based on consumers buying behavior that is by the response to their products and services. As a customer, how are you responding to the offerings of the company? Offerings means what? Products and services. Products which may be tangible or intangible and when it is intangible, we are uh, telling it services, right? So your marketer divides the segment based on purchase occasion, maybe benefit sought, user status, usage rate, right? Loyalty status, readiness state attitude toward the products and services, etc. For instance, for, a, for, for my kind of services, maybe for, suppose if I am a business person and I, I am there to render a particular services to the customer, there would be different, different usage rate. Some are heavy users, some are medium users, some are light users, right? So I have to identify, right? Who are the heavy users, who are the medium users and who are the light user. And if I'm able to identify that, I may, I may be able to devise my marketing strategies, you know, in different manner. For heavy user, I will have a different strategy and for medium and light user, I will have different strategy. Industries that frequently use customer loyalty segmentation, you know, or maybe this segmentation, they are basically hospitality sectors. Travel if you see, you know, frequent flyers, programs and then banking and uh, finance companies also. Like uh, for certain, you know, people who are using uh, credit card immensely, they are called platinum credit card members and so on and so forth and maybe they are given some extra services on their uh, credit card, right? So basically in services industry, if you see, behavioral segmentation is used. By dividing target audience based on their behavior allows you as a marketer to create specific messaging that will accommodate to those behavior. For instance, you would always see um, uh, the, you know, marketing campaign such as uh, for our, you know, frequent flyers, the aviation industry, if you go, you will see that they, they have certain, uh, you know, kind of uh, offerings for uh, frequent flyers. So this is what, or maybe there are preferred hotel guests. So those customers who have high lifetime value, customer lifetime value, it is called CLV. So high customer lifetime value customer would always, you know, be given preference, number one. And number two, the strategies you know, to woo that particular customer would be different than the rest of the customer, right? So that was behavior segmentation. 
Now, what is the importance of segmentation? Why do we actually need to segment the market? Can we, uh, can't we do marketing without segmentation? Can't we live without it? Let us see. Segmentation is important, as I said, because the market is very, very heterogeneous in nature, right? And segmentation allows to identify the right market for your particular kind of product or services. And then, you know, once you identify the target market, then what you're doing, you're trying to uh, target the market more effectively, having delighted and loyal customers, resulting in improved return on investments. If you segment the market, you can cater to your customers in a more proper manner, in a more effective manner. And if you are able to, uh, you know, cater to your customers in a more effective manner, you will have delighted customer. Delighted customer means loyal customer. Loyal customer means again, lesser cost, right, and more profitability. That means your return on investments would be higher. And then segmentation makes planning campaign easier also. Suppose you have, you are planning for a campaign, right? And you know that your target market is uh, age group of, say for example, 13 to uh, 17 or 18 years of age group. That means you're targeting teenagers. Your advertising campaign, your marketing campaign would be according to their taste and preference, according to their choice. It also helps understanding the customer's needs and wants and it enables tailor-made marketing strategies, right? Segmentation helps marketer to be more efficient in terms of time, money and other resources and optimum use of productive resources because resources are limited in your organization or as a whole also resources are limited and with those limited resources you have to uh, do your business. So if you can make optimum use of resources that eventually is going to bring or fetch more profit to you. Segmentation also fetches the benefit of specialization. You can direct your marketing efforts more clearly and more specifically. You can offer specialized products in the market if you can segment the market on you know, particular base effectively. And then knowing your customers allow you to offer a more personal value proposition. And especially as I said, not only for larger companies, especially when you are a small scale business enterprise, you are a small scale business organization, it becomes all the more important for you to go for segmentation because you may not have you know, financial capability to cater to the entire market. You, have, you may have limited manufacturing and marketing capacity. So in that case, it is always better to you to segment the market and then focus on a particular segment. Now we'll see what are the levels of market segmentation, right? Market segmentation can be carried out at different levels. You can, you as a company, you know, you maybe you go for no segmentation at all, or maybe complete segmentation, or maybe somewhere in between these two. These are the extreme ends, you know, no segmentation, complete segmentation. But be between these two ends, there are certain things which can also be done. So let us see what is the entire range of market segmentation that we can see or experience. One is called mass marketing. Mass marketing is one end of, you know, segmentation. That means no segmentation at all. You are not going to segment the market and you are offering the uh, commodities or services and believing one size fits all. You feel that whatever offerings you have to offer to the customers, it will be suitable to all. This strategy was earlier used by most organizations. If you remember the last class, the previous session, the production approach or the, the era when the production cons concept of marketing was used, then one size fits all, you know, kind of philosophy world, right? And even now if you see, so in the small business organizations, this mass, mass marketing is working because they do not, do not have enough resources to give customized services to the entire market. So what do they do? They do no segmentation, they try to focus the local market, right? Or maybe they are there with the, with the uh, they would have tried to a local market, but you know, this information technology has changed. They have given a more platform to these kinds of uh, small scale business organization also, that even, you know, without incurring much, they can go global, right? So, so for, for example, I'm a small business organization, I'm sitting, suppose I'm, um, you know, into manufacturing of some accessories, maybe earrings, right? And I'm sitting here, I have a small uh, group of people and with whom I'm doing this business, right? So I'm into manufacturing of, say for example, earrings. 
online you know method is such that through online anyone can order my earrings right what i have to do i just have to dispatch it to a particular address right everything is less everything is you know covered so mass marketing is also used by you know small business organization and then segment marketing what is segment marketing that we have been discussed that you are trying to segment the entire market on particular basis and then you are choosing either a particular segment or you are choosing choosing different segment and you are devising different tools different marketing strategies for different different segment that is called segment marketing and likewise there is one niche marketing when you are trying to you have divided the market into various segments when you are trying to divide the particular segment again into various subsets then it becomes niche marketing right so adapting a company's offerings to more closely match the needs of one or more sub segments that is called niche marketing a niche is a more narrowly defined group usually identified by dividing a segments into sub segment which has not yet been well served so you can you know enter into the market catering to that particular segment or you maybe you can call it sub segment right so a company might create a niche market and develop highly specialized products or services to meet the customers needs that aren't being met by other offerings for example shoes for vegan women could be a good example for that right or maybe apparel for plus size people that is again what is what is this is an example of niche marketing and then micro marketing when you are further dividing when you are further segmenting you have segmented then you have segmented again you have created sub segments and then further you are trying to narrow it down further you are trying to narrow down your clientele then it becomes micro marketing so this form of target marketing in which uh, is a marketing uh, you know technique in which marketers tailor their marketing programs to the needs and wants of narrowly defined geographic demographic psychographic or behavioral segments in this case what is happening products are specialized to meet a very very spe specific need of potential customers and marketed primarily to, to primarily to that customer for example uh, if you see insurance companies designing products for commercial fishing, fishing boats this is not very usual but it is for a particular you know kind of business and then even more you know uh, narrowly defined form is individual marketing which is the other extreme end one was no segmentation the other was extreme segmentation that is individual marketing here what are you doing as a marketer you are tailoring products and marketing programs to the needs and preferences of individual customers in a way you know that you end up attending to individual customers in this extreme uh, 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 you know marketing i would say that it is a um, extreme form of micro marketing that micro marketing itself you were narrowing it down and when you further narrow it down it becomes individual marketing right so much so that you are catering to individual as a customer for example if you see voice insurance of lata mangeshkar this is an example of individual marketing not everybody get you know takes insurance voice insurance right so we have discussed so far that there are certain bases on which we can segment or divide the entire market right and why should we entire uh, why should we segment the market or divide the market now we'll discuss quickly that what are the various strategies you know that can be used when we have segmented the market so these those segmentation strategies are again broadly classified into three categories undifferentiated strategy differentiated strategy and concentrated strategy so what is differentiated strategy you have divided the entire market into various segments again say for example segment a segment b segment c segment d or for, for example suppose i am taking uh, you know the entire country india as a market then i have divided the country in four segments north south east and west so i have segmented and for each segment for north segment i am there with a different product uh, sorry marketing mix in segment south i am there with a different uh, marketing mix likewise in east and west i am there with different different marketing mix so i'll design my marketing strategy or my you know marketing plan according to the taste and preferences of that particular segment i am catering to the entire country but i am having different different 
you know marketing mix for different different segments that is called differentiated marketing strategy so marketing mix a for segment a marketing mix b for segment b marketing mix c for segment c and marketing mix d for segment d different different marketing mix for different different segments on the contrary undifferentiated marketing strategy means very simply one size fits all absence of segmentation you don't want to you know uh, take care of the segmentation you don't want to consider the heterogeneity of the market and you are offering the products and services to the entire market right and you are watching it this can you know there can be a reason for undifferentiated marketing also one that you don't want to go and the other is there are weak segment differences suppose you try you're trying to segment the market but when you're trying to segment it divide it you are seeing that it is not differentiable properly then there is no meaning of segmenting the market so it is always better to go for in undifferentiated strategy if you remember that we have discussed the requirement of effective segmentation so one element was it the segment should be differentiable if the segments are not differentiable there is no need right so why to go for differentiated marketing strategy go for un, uh, differentiated marketing strategy and the other strategy is concentrated marketing strategy concentrated is what the micro marketing or maybe niche marketing or individual marketing that is called concentrated marketing uh, marketing strategy wherein what you are doing you are trying to segment the market into various segments and out of those segments you have chosen one segment and concentrating on that particular segment only you are investing all your resources in that particular segment to cater to the customer so that is called concentrated marketing segment so let us quickly sum up what all we have seen in uh, the market segmentation as it is very as it uh, market segmentation is very important when segmenting market to target all those potential customers that fit into the segment you understand your target fully so that you have a promising proposition proposition means goods and services to offer to them that they can afford and this will create win win situation for both companies and customers so this was the end of the discussion see you in next session happy learning